Hello YouTube, Doobie Streams here. For the better part of this month, I've been playing an outstanding game called Control, the latest title from Alan Wake developer Remedy Entertainment. I started posting a let's play of the series, but those videos don't seem to gain much traction, which is understandable of course. I can't blame anyone for not wanting to watch hour-long videos of a game with no commentary. Since I really liked it though, I wanted to make a video about it, and since I had all the footage anyway, I decided to do a good old fashioned boss guide slash ranking. I'm going to go through and list off each boss in the order I find them to be most difficult, starting with the easiest and working our way to the hardest. In addition, I will be telling you my big brain strategies for each fight in case any of you find yourself stuck on one of these pesky buggers. Timestamps will be in the description if there's a specific one you're looking for. Also, for clarity's sake, let me point out there are two bosses that you fight twice in this game, and I will be ranking each fight separately as the strategies for them can be a bit different. I would also encourage you to hit that subscribe button if you like what we do here and want to see more. With that out of the way, let's rank the bosses of control. Number 8, The Anchor. The easiest boss in the game is by far and away The Anchor, and I mean it's not even close. This thing is so pathetic you basically have to politely ask it to kill you. What's its gimmick you ask? Well get this, he spins around in a circle and makes a whopping one shooting attack every 20 to 30 seconds. That is literally it. To add insult to lack of injury, you can just throw a piece of debris into its core and stop it from even doing that one attack since it takes multiple trimesters to birth all of the clocks it shoots out at you. I played this fight super cautious because I was half expecting it to transform or some shit after I took its health bar out, but nope, the anchor just pathetically crashed to the ground and Jesse exercised the demons from it. Strategy wise, there isn't much to say here except make sure to kill the floating hiss it will summon about halfway through the fight. I mean shit, you can just stay on one platform the entire battle if you want, that's what I did. Its attack even kills the enemies that it spawns in, so if you somehow do get overwhelmed, it'll even help you out in that regard. Just don't get so comfortable that you forget about the giant mass floating in the middle of your screen, because I imagine the clock blast will one-shot you if it does ever manage to hit. Number 7. Former Second Fight Former is one of the two bosses you encounter multiple times, and boy for some reason its second fight seemed so much easier to me. Which is weird, because as we'll discuss, the strategy for the second fight is pretty much the same as the first, and considering for this one you're on a smaller platform, you'd imagine it would be more difficult. The thing is though, at this point in the game, Jesse likely has a couple upgrades to some key abilities and better weapon mods that aren't at your disposal the first time around. I'll get into how to beat him on his next appearance on our list, because the tactics are exactly the same. For now, just note that in this player's opinion, the second battle is much less daunting than the first. Number 6, Tomasi First Fight The first boss fight chronologically isn't much on the strength scale, but that's because they don't want to throw you in the deep end of the pool just yet. He floats around and shoots shit at you, but it's all easily avoided as long as you stick to the canister holders to your right and left. Though his attacks will basically kill you in one hit, so just be aware of your surroundings at all times. Eventually he will start to spawn enemies into the room, and make sure you take them out quickly from the safety of cover. When in doubt, retreat further under the walkway so Tomasi doesn't clip you with a flying 2x4 while you're not looking. His health bar melts away fast enough, and the enemies aren't anything particularly scary. So just stay calm and you'll take care of him just fine. Don't worry though, he comes back and makes sure to take plenty of roids for the second fight. Number 5, Mold 1. I saw a lot of people on reddit say this was one of the harder fights, and I can imagine there is merit to that when you don't make him the literal last fight of the game. By the time I went back and fought him, 
Jesse was a full-blown Avenger, and this Mario plant just didn't stand a chance. When you drop into the room, there is a rock immediately to your right that can be used as cover from its vine slaps. Just make sure to jump up and levitate every now and then, as you will have raining sacks of poison that explode trying to make your life way harder than it needs to be. When you jump up, take the opportunity to smack its budding feminine flower with a giant slab of rock for ridiculous damage. You can kill it in about 7 launches if you hit it right in the G spot every time, but I was kind of sloppy so I had to use a few well placed grip shots for the assist. I promise none of this is meant to be a sexual innuendo. I can definitely see this boss being way harder if you try taking on earlier though, so I wouldn't fault anyone for thinking it should be higher on the list. Number 4, Salvador. Man, did this fight slap me upside the head. As the second boss fight in the game, Salvador's job is to kick the training wheels off the bike and make you feel what control can be like at its most brutally aggressive. And boy, does him and his professional football team sized squad take that job seriously. That being said, I think I made this fight much harder on myself than it needed to be. I wasn't using C's nearly as much as I should have, and given the insane amount of backup he constantly calls in, I really feel like that's the key here. See, the real problem isn't really Salvador. Sure, his attacks are incredibly painful if they hit, but there are pillars on each corner of the room you can use to avoid them. He is also laughably slow, so as long as you aren't super aggressive, he won't get many opportunities to attack you. The problem with this fight lies in all the ads he spawns into the tiny room you're fighting in, especially when those ads are throwing grenades and firing rockets that can track you around corners. The way I beat him was hugging the left pillar and killing all of the spawns as fast as I possibly could. He does eventually stop summoning them in, and then it's just a matter of 1v1ing Salvador. I mean, he as an enemy is so unremarkable it becomes a basic enemy by the end of the game. Once you kill his crew, just launch stuff into him to break his shield and unload with headshots. You can even get a launch off on him as he comes down to start the fight effectively evaporating about a fifth of his bar before the fight even actually begins. If you're smart enough to take advantage of C's unlike me, this further trivializes the fight, as the major threat is now neutralized and working for you. So don't be like me, and remember your full assortment of powers. Number 3, Former First Fight Here's the boss everyone will laugh at me over, but man was this due to pain for me, and it's 100% due to when I fought it. You see, in this fight, Former really relies on the fact you are new to the levitate ability, and don't really have a great grasp of levitating and attacking at the same time yet. He fires orbs that track you and can do a lot of damage. But most importantly, its melee attacks poke giant holes in the platform underneath you. Fall through any of these holes and it's an instant death, which happened to me a good dozen times before I gave up and decided to do more of the game. After gaining some upgrades to my levitate, I came back and beat it the first try. If you fight it before you have a good levitate duration, it becomes a real chore avoiding all the pitfalls in the map you're fighting on. This is why the second fight is so much easier, because at that point in the game, you probably have upgraded levitate so much, you can just chill in midair and shoot him while launching orbs back into its eye. Strategy wise, that's exactly what I recommend. Levitate and dodge side to side when it swings at you, while either shooting the orbs to blow them up, or tossing them back into his grill for some sexy damage. Just make absolutely sure you check where you're landing, because the fall deaths here can be really brutal if you're not looking out for them. Number 2. A Sedge Man, this was an epic opening sequence to a fight. Entering the Mirror Realm and discovering the mysterious Bizarro Jesse was the perfect build up to an epic battle, 
and holy hell did it deliver as these two divas of destruction just completely eviscerated the room around them. This was such a cool fight, and despite the fact I killed her my first try, I still rank her higher than a lot of bosses that actually killed me. Why you ask? Well, I was pretty upgraded by the time I fought her, and despite that it took a lot of effort and some extreme luck to survive this encounter. Unlike Salvador for example, this isn't a fight I can look at and say, oh I'm gonna wreck that on my second playthrough. I barely beat her with a pretty upgraded Jesse, and I think I have about the same puncher's chance as I did before. It just so happens on my first playthrough that punch connected. Strategy wise she has three phases. The first involves her just hanging back and shooting you with either spin or charge. Spin isn't accurate at all from far away, so just stay back and launch shit at her if she does that. Charge can be a bit harder to dodge since it tracks you, but a quick step to the side right before impact should do the trick here. In between just shoot her and launch anything nearby, and you should clear this phase in a jiff. Second phase sees her start popping shield and walking toward you while firing rockets and throwing debris. Use launch to soften up her shield, and when you break it she kind of just stands there in bewilderment for a good 5 seconds, allowing you to unload with your service weapon or launch more furniture upside her head. In the final phase, she starts to levitate while firing more charge shots at you. Circle around her and keep moving to avoid them. Occasionally she will go for a slam attack against you, but a quick step or shield should avoid most of the damage here. Just keep shooting her and avoiding her attacks and you'll be golden. Number 1. Tomasi Second Fight The hardest boss in control is ironically the second encounter with the first boss in the game, and man did this dude step his game up since that first battle. Not only does the floating baddie have a shield now, but the room you are in is much less cover friendly. Additionally, as opposed to just basic enemies, he summons exploding and distorted hiss, the latter of which is the real pain. I can't tell you how many times that fucking thing just popped up next to me and wiped my entire bar. This fight took me almost two hours, and man I was getting discouraged. That is, until I realized I had been a huge idiot, and shield counters the distorted hiss perfectly. Strategy wise, here's a rundown. When you first enter the room, grab something to throw and chuck it at Tomasi when he first appears. This hits almost every time, because he is still on the tail end of his intro animation when his health bar first appears. Take cover behind the pillar on the left, and just keep spamming launch at him while peppering him with shots. Elevated hiss like Tomasi seem to do a much crappier job dodging when you throw non-stop and this is exactly what you should do to break his shield. After about one third of his bar is gone, he'll summon a bunch of charged hiss and a distorted hiss. Immediately run under one of the staircases. Tomasi isn't particularly aggressive when you do this, and you'll have time to pick off the charged hiss. If you see the gray smoke start to gather in front of you, Smash down on that shield button the second the distorted hiss becomes visible. Its scream attack will do almost nothing, and then it will stand there for a few seconds so you can unload into it with your service weapon mode of choice. I find spin and shatter to be the most effective at killing them, but I also hear pierce is pretty good. Once the adds are gone, jump up to the center catwalk, and you'll notice you're now above Tomasi. For some reason, he doesn't actually float high enough to reliably hit you from here, so just levitate above him and chuck stuff to break his shield. On his last third of health, he'll summon some Hiss Rangers and more charged Hiss, but no distorted thankfully. Take this time to just run back and forth on the catwalk, waxing all of the charged Hiss and throwing debris down at the Rangers who spawn in. After they're all gone, 
go back to taking advantage of Tomasi's impotent levitation skills, and you'll be clapping your hands in victory within minutes. As much as this fight annoyed me for a bit, I have to admit it's a great final skill test for what you've learned over the course of the game. So props to Tomasi for going from Gundyr to Nameless King all in the span of one game. He doesn't quite fill the coolness meter as well as SJ did, but I'll be damned if he doesn't pack the hardest punch in the game. Well there you have it folks, that's my ranking and guide for all the bosses in control. I'll be releasing a proper review of the game within the next week or two, so make sure to keep an eye out for that. If you like this video and want to see me do more like it, go ahead and let me know in the comments. I think until I can get a setup for streaming I'm going to just stick to reviews and guide videos, but I will certainly get the gear setup done ASAP. I mean for a channel with streams in its name, the fact I've literally never streamed is pretty hilarious in a sad kind of way. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.